Hi everybody, I uh, just wanted to do a little bit of a stock market review tonight, um, take a look at what's been going on. It's been kind of an interesting uh, few days here, uh, been uh, going up quite significantly. So that's a very good sign and a good time to do a review of the stock market. So this is the highest the MACD technical indicator has been uh, since pretty much August and pretty much for a long time. Um, at least on a 60 minute chart. So uh, we are quite high right now um, in terms of uh, moving up here uh, in the market. Now if you take the price times the volume, you actually see that we are by far in the highest uh, range right now. So, um, you know, these other moves up that we've seen have been big, but the one that we saw today um, was uh, one of the largest upward moves that we've seen in quite some time. So we've been seeing pretty steady downward moves since about the middle of August. Uh, you can see right here that this is all negative force um, with a little bit of an exception in here. So <coughs> I think that kind of got us prepared. Uh, this section in here, uh, early September, maybe looks a lot like what we're seeing now. Um, but what we're seeing now is actually even more upward pressure uh, than we saw back in September. So typical upward pressure looks about like here uh, around the 15 million mark. Um, that's price times volume. Um, but uh, we don't really see uh, too much of that above here except for just today. So this is a pretty good sign, uh, maybe a big change. So the volatility in the market has been steadily increasing. You can see by the ATR here, uh, average to range, uh, that definitely we've kind of made some bigger moves here. Um, and we're actually starting to see a little bit um, maybe of a peak in volatility at this point. That peak you maybe say occurred right around 9 of 22, so September 22nd. Um, these downward moves were quite uh, volatile in the downward direction. You can see a plot of standard deviation here uh, shows that uh, that was around 9.14, so September 14th. Uh, but really right in here, uh, September 13th. Uh, so the, this is kind of a lagging indicator. So it just shows us um, kind of the range in the area where we're talking about where it's the neg neg negative downturn. So interestingly, on the standard deviation chart, we aren't quite at that level. So these downward trends were quite more significant um, than the upward trend that we see right now. So we're still not above that range. So we wanted to see this maybe a little bit higher. Uh, and we're not sure if we're going to see that yet because to really overcome this peak, we would really like to see uh, standard deviation positive above this level. So really what this time frame kind of tells us about is that we're kind of heading back into July of this past year um, with the price that we're at right now. So this to climb this peak here is basically what we're trying to do right now. I think a lot of people in the market are saying, well, how long is it going to take to get back to the peak that we had uh, back in 816? Uh, and that's basically the main question right now. Now that is not the only peak left to climb. Um, there would be the 816 peak and then we had another peak back in here, 331 uh, of 22. So, and then the main peak being back here. So we still got a long way to go uh, in terms of you know these three peaks uh, that we'd like to see uh, and we're basically that's what we're at right now so whether we're going to drop further make a new peak a fourth peak that we have to try to surmount later is an interesting question now you can see from the volume profile most of that uh price happened right around 20 percent above where we are right now in the market um, so that's right in here this range so we had to go up 20 percent just to kind of get back to a medium peak level. So we are quite low um, right now. And just for reference, the total back to the main peak uh, is about 30%. And if we're ever going to make it back to COVID land, uh, that drop is about 37%. So seriously drop. Uh, it had to be a pretty serious drop to get us back to COVID land. To get us to back to the peak of COVID land right before that, um, would be a drop of about 8 or 9%. So we're talking 30% uh, drop from the peak here, um, and then maybe about a 20% drop uh, to kind of like an average land, and then again a, about a 9% drop to the peak of COVID uh, right in there. 
So the volume has been increasing uh, since about July, and you can see that on the volume oscillator. Um, so that's good news in general. Um, we were very low in July in terms of the volume. So that means the price wasn't really trusted, but uh, you know, it's just basically taking a look at how the volume oscillator is going. So here's a force index looking at the whole overall uh, time frame. One thing that's a little bit surprising about the force index, uh, it's basically price times volume. You don't really see that we're, you can tell that we're certainly a lot higher on the force than we have been uh, for many months, except for maybe right back to here. So this is back to nine of 22. Uh, and then we saw a lot of positive force back in here. So we're just kind of getting at the start, tip of the iceberg of a potential up swing here. How far we make it is a very interesting question, um, especially since we've seen increase in negativity uh, force on the, on the negative side. So really what we're trying to battle here on the positive side is all of this. So this is all the negativity, which we saw kind of getting better and then getting much worse and then getting better and then getting worse. And I would say this is even looking like a much worse scenario. So um, I don't know, you know, there's kind of a curve around here and certainly we do have a positive move here. So we might not see as negative as we saw back here in 6, uh, 13 and 22. So, uh, you know, it's just looking like the question is how much we'd have to start seeing positive forces uh, to really overcome all this. Uh, to get back to the peak here, we're talking, we really got to overcome this hump right here. So this is a big drop um, starting on uh, 609. So you can see uh, in May, June timeframe, basically there was a lot of uh, Russian uh, siege of Maripol and uh, some other things, but basically it was uh, kind of more coincided around uh, the 5th or the 9th of June. Uh, so we've been looking approximately one to three months back uh, most of the time in the analysis that we've done here. So if we look at this carefully, um, you know, in general, the communication services have really kind of struggled over that time frame. Healthcare has really struggled in the last three months um, and energy has done pretty well. So um, just to kind of give us an overview of what's been happening. Now, if you look at the last month, um, it's a little bit different picture, uh, but looks a little bit worse actually this past month and it looks really bad for the past six months uh, so pretty much every sector doing bad here you can see apple google everything down like 30 percent or more now that 30 percent does kind of correspond to the peak here you see about 27 percent uh, for the s p maybe 30 percent so 28 percent uh, from the current uh, point that we're at right now it's kind of interesting to see the volume details per day um, on a 60 minute chart. You can kind of see that um, that, you know, back here uh, we saw a pretty positive volume um, in uh, around end of September. Um, and then basically that volume kind of turned into negative volume uh, right at the end of the September as well. So you can see basically that kind of brought us into the start of October. Um, with some negative uh, volume on the charts here. So you can see that this wasn't super, super negative. There's a couple positive signs in here, but on the 29th, um, that was pretty bad. Um, and then uh, the 30th uh, was kind of mixed with mostly positive volume in here. You can see uh, there's some positive and then actually it got to be mostly negative by the end of the day. Um, so that wasn't really great. And then so after the second, then then that's when we started to kind of get most of this more positive volume that we've been seeing. So when we compare positive volume, um, you know, we did see that big spike today, um, but uh, it was really um, the combination the past two days was pretty good. So one of the questions is how much money is flown into the market and is that too much or is it just kind of at a peak or what's going on? So. You know, it, according to the money flow, we are pretty high right now. Um, this looks like we hit like a high and then another high, a double high. So um, it could be sustained a little bit, um, but um, it looks like, uh, you know, maybe going down to a more medium level, maybe softening up for the next couple of days might be one option. Uh, so we do see uh, 
we look at each of these sectors, like financial sector, that uh, we are quite low here, uh, heading back to basically just before COVID times or just after COVID times. When we do uh, kind of divide the market up uh, over the last six months, you can definitely see there's definitely um, a line between uh, the, the people that have been positive and the people that have been negative. So you can see uh, quite a number of companies um, not doing so great um, below this line and then quite a number of companies doing you know, fairly good as well. So over this past year, you can see uh, pretty much Meta having the hardest time uh, of the larger cap companies. Uh, you can also see uh, NVIDIA kind of struggling here over the past year. ASML um, and also Taiwan Semiconductor. Um, and then you can see Salesforce actually kind of having some struggles as well, uh, down almost 40% for the year. And then over this past year, you can also see um, when you do this by uh, industry, consumer is really struggling here. You can see um, Amazon down quite a bit, um, but really the technology sector in here, you can see kind of getting hit with these guys here, Workday and some others. But on the positive side of things, you can see energy up here really doing quite well. Um, and then also uh, some of the financial companies doing pretty good uh, in here. Uh, so what about in the next uh, few days or weeks? Um, you know, it's likely that we'll see uh, some more of these oscillations um, on the pretty high side. Looks like the average range is keeping an increase, so these higher side is likely uh, both the positive and negative so right now we are a little bit on the positive side so it's likely that we're going to kind of trim off uh, in the next few days maybe level off uh, in this region right in here on the force side of things um, it's likely that we'll still see some pretty negative forces um, going on at least until uh, mid-october um, and then uh, some positives up in this range as well so it's likely that volume will keep increasing uh, until mid-October. Um, you can see that that's pretty much what's already happened here uh, on the 30th, the start of the month, um, giving us a good sign. And then way back even into um, August, we can see August and September starting to increase. So uh, maybe, you know, upwards of 100 and, um, I don't know, let's see. So that would be basically a 30% increase in volume. Um, from what we're seeing right here, um, which is, seems like a lot now, um, but there'll probably be a lot of trading. Um, that is one scenario. Um, it's unlikely that we're going to drop in volume, but um, it's maybe maybe 20% we could see increase in volume. So on the ATR, we can see that at least in through, uh, you know, we're, we're expecting at least the, these 2% moves are daily moves that we should expect every day. Um, and that should happen pretty much into November um, and maybe even longer. So if that keeps happening, that's pretty volatile and kind of crazy. But it's looking like, uh, you know, the volatility is increasing here, kind of maybe leveling off a little bit. So we could see by November um, maybe less of a move. So maybe nine, nine. So maybe, you know, 2.2% flat by November. Uh, so going up into 2.5% daily moves uh, into mid-October and then 2% moves in November. So according to the Stochastic Momentum Index, the momentum that we're starting to see now, it says that we're going to see an up, you know, we, we can see an up at least until uh, November. Um, and that could be a pretty good sign. I mean, this the momentum that we saw this past day, I mean, this 2.5% up moves, um, who knows? It could mean a pretty good market uh, until, you know, maybe mid, mid October and even into November. So in terms of trend analysis, you know, we could see ourselves up uh, in an uptrend for at least another few days. Um, and if that's the case, um, you know, going at this rate, we could see ourselves, um, you know, still going up by another, you know, 4% or even, yeah, about a 4%, 3.7%. That calculation is basically done by measuring uh, the Arun indicator here. So we got some space on the Arun indicator here. 
uh, between here and here, uh, and then before the uh, low side basically gets back up um, here, and we are on a high side uh, for the stochastic, so we still have maybe a little bit of room, but maybe not too much, depending on um, how long this stochastic and the RSI can stay in a high of space. We are already seeing on the MACD uh, some slowing down here uh, in this, at least on the 60 minute chart. So keep in mind that uh, on the daily chart, we did notice that there's three humps. This is one of three that we would need to overcome uh, to get back to the level that we were at the start of the year. So even if we make it up to the here, we still have to make it above this. So there's quite a lot, um, quite a lot of pressure uh, to get up to the higher, higher levels. Those three bumps to kind of give us a perspective here is we'd have to make it past this this one here, um, which is the excuse me August uh, hill, and then we'd have to get past this hill, which was the uh, January for March hill or April hill, um, and then the start of the year hill, uh, which is January. So basically, uh, you know, it, it's still this first this first making it past August this hill will be quite a accomplishment um and that you know at best um you know we could make it you know by mid-october um but really it's gonna take maybe three times that maybe four times that um so maybe out to uh january of the start of 23 uh, so you know, that's still the, brings the whole winter just to try to get back to the first hill level is probably more likely. Now, one of the problems is that we did see like a level of support down here. So that kind of means resistance and support uh, relative to these other turnarounds. So this turnaround here was a quite fast turnaround. This uh, downward trend was uh, kind of agreed upon a little bit as well, you could say. But in general, you know, was wasn't really agreed upon because uh, these levels are kind of bouncing around a little bit as it heads down. So, you know, it just means that there wasn't too much certainty on this downward trend right at the start, um, and then much more certainty on the second run, um, and then this upward leg. You know, so we did see this weird kind of fourth hill. Um, you could almost say um, that kind of corresponds to this this bump in here as well. So when I measure this out, you know, to get the quickest we could see is about eight days. Um, and when you multiply that uh, times two um, and you get about 16 days, uh, that's the quickest that we could probably make it actually to the midpoint. So it's likely that, you know, the, the soonest we could make it to the high point up here is, is about eight or nine days. Um, and that means that we could maybe make it we'd have to make it to the midpoint here in about four days. Um, so, you know, it's just, that's the measurements. So with a measurement like this, we're seeing that this is pretty much the highest that we've seen uh, for many months. So uh, this upward trend is no joke, it's serious. Um, and it means that there are people willing to buy into the market at this level. So with a force like that heading up, it makes me think that, you know, maybe by the 11th, uh, you know, next week, not only this week, but next week, sometime next week, we could make it um, pretty high um, up here. Um, and th that's pretty certain just because the amount of investment um, that happened today um, in the market in the past few days, actually. Anyway, I hope you really enjoyed the study of the stock market. Um, hopefully give you some ideas about what's been happening and what might happen. Um, and uh, thanks a lot for listening in here. Try to like and subscribe. I'd be glad to talk over some details with you. I've had some fun times in the past talking over with uh, the market with some others uh, privately. Um, but uh, yeah, please like and subscribe and hope to hear from you soon. Thanks again. Ciao.